guess what I'm going to talk about. Hey, Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Ink Nouveau. Today I'm going to do a review of one of the new Pilot of Roshizuku inks, Amairo Sky Blue. It's a nice color. Um, it's got some things I like about it, got some things I don't like, so I'm going to kind of cover it all and compare it to some other inks uh, that are kind of in that range. This ink kind of fits right into those nice blues, that nice medium blue range that I really kind of like. So I'm going to pick it apart a little bit, show you my review of Amairo. Now, how cool does this ink bottle look? I mean, seriously. The packaging on the Hiroshizuku inks is pretty arguably one of the best of any ink bottles that you're gonna find. Um, that's true on the outer packaging as well as the bottle itself. They just, they do it right. I mean, I, I'm gonna say it, that you pay for it. It's expensive ink, but they definitely make it feel like you're, you're paying for some design, some, some higher level stuff than just the ink. Um, Amairo is one of the newer inks uh, as of the making of this video here in January 2013. It's the newest inks that have come out from Pilot. Um, it is going to complete the 24 inks series of the Pilot of Roshizuku. So we're not expecting to see any more of these. Uh, the ink itself is some good stuff. But uh, just to cover the bottle, if you've never seen a Roshizuku before, I've reviewed a few other inks, but the bottle is great. It's got this little dip down in here. It's got a nice wide mouth, wide opening. Um, it's good stuff. So the actual ink itself, here it is. I did a review of it. I have my trusty Rhodia 80 gram dot pad paper that I have here. I'm a big fan of that. I use it for all my reviews. Um, totally biased. You know, I'm a retailer. I sell the stuff. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. But here's the blue. It's in a kind of a medium range blue. It's called sky blue. Uh, and that's definitely exactly what it looks like. It's very much of a turquoise kind of color with very little green to it. It's a very much of a, a true blue kind of turquoise. Uh, so it's sold in a 50 mil bottle. I reviewed it with my trusty ocean blue Lamy All-Star with a medium steel nib. I use this pen for a lot of different reviews and stuff. Um, it's one that I'm familiar with and I feel like a lot of people have Lamy nibs, so it'd be a good thing to kind of base it off of. Uh, the one thing that kind of shocked me the most about this ink was the dry time. Now, I've reviewed several other Hiroshizukus. Um, I haven't published all my reviews yet, but of all the inks I've reviewed, the one thread, the one kind of common thing with all the inks is that they dry really fast, even on Rhodia paper. Well, I didn't find that to be the case with Amairo. I found that the dry time is kind of normal. And I say that not necessarily in a bad way because it's, it dries kind of like I would expect any old ink to dry uh, on Rhodia paper, you know, in that 25 second range, uh, 30 second range, somewhere around there, because it's very ink resistant paper. But with the Hiroshizukas, I found that most were like five to 10 seconds. Uh, most of the original uh, 17 inks that came out uh, dried really fast. So um, as far as water resistance goes, when I do this drip test here, basically what I'm looking for, I do a grid, let it dry for a minute or two. I come kind of simulating, you know, if you're in a real life situation where you're writing and then you drip something, water, coffee, whatever, onto your writing, are you still going to be able to read it? Well, I gave it a water resistance rating of low just because a lot of the ink washes away. It's still kind of readable though. So it's not a total deal breaker. Just know that that's not really a selling point. Now on that same token, if you're doing any kind of ink washing or anything where you want to draw out colors of the ink in a washable form, um, I did this smear here with a wet Q-tip so you can see what it kind of looks like, the secondary color and everything that pulls away. It doesn't have a lot of secondary colors that bleed out. It's pretty much a continuous blue like that, uh, very similar to its primary color when you wash it. So it leads me to think that it's a fairly pure blue dye uh, in, this, in this ink. Um, the saturation level is pretty, um, you know, pretty low. I gave it like a medium rating um, because, you know, you are able to see a huge difference between doing a single swab versus a double and a triple swab. Um, and then where it pulls up here, it gets really dark over there. So it's got some really good shading, especially on the ink resistant paper like this. Um, it is really easy to clean out of the pen, which is not necessarily a given when you have blue inks. Um, and then the flow is very wet, which that is one thing that 
the Iroshizuku just like, I don't even know how to explain it. If you've ever used Iroshizuku ink, you know what I'm talking about. But it's just, when you're using it in the pen, it feels like you just touch the nib to the paper and it just comes out of the pen. Not in a feathering spreading kind of way, in a bad way, but it just feels so effortless while you're writing. Um, so in that respect, it's Iroshizuku all the way. Um, just kind of as a comparison, you know, I thought that I have this review of Kanpeki, which is another Iroshizuku ink. Uh, that I'm a big fan of. It's a similar kind of blue. It's a darker, not quite as sky blue. Um, but to show you what I was talking about with that dry time thing, here's the dry time I would get with Kanpeki. You know, it would smear after five seconds. By some 10 seconds, it was completely dry. And you can see here with the Amairo, you know, it's going to take upwards of 30 seconds to get that same kind of smear. So I don't know what they did different with this. But anyway, I was a little disappointed in that. So just to be completely fair and honest, I was hoping for a faster dry time. But you know, sometimes you just you gotta roll with the punches. Anyway, so I tried it on some other papers. You know, like I said, I got the Rhodia paper, which is one kind of paper. It's very ink resistant. Dry time is very extended on this paper. Um, I did it on a couple other ones too. I've got some H HP 24 pound laser jet, which is at least currently what we use at GouletPens.com to print our invoices and stuff, if, you, if you're familiar with that paper at all. Uh, this one, I was able to get it to be fully dry just after 10 seconds. So even though it's still smooth, very ink resistant paper, it dried a lot faster than on the Rhodia for whatever reason. Um, and still, you know, looks good, looks still as a tight line, no feathering, no bleeding. Uh, on the back or anything like that. You know, it looks really good. And then I did it on some of the cheapest paper I have, which is just like a $1 Mead notebook, um, college rule notebook. Um, I don't know the specs of the paper because they don't even list them. But um, this one, I definitely got more spread, you know, especially if you compare, um, you know, the tightness of the line. This is the exact same pen. The tightness of the line, the variation in the color while you're writing that shading is quite a bit different between the Rhodia uh, and the Mead. But look at that dry time. It dried in under five seconds. I mean, basically, like, I would do a couple ticks and then, you know, write with it, and it's dry almost immediately. Of course, it's absorbing into the paper quickly. That's why it's doing that. And as a result, it's going to bleed through a bit on the back, but it's not as bad as it could be. I mean, it's a really wet ink in a fairly wet pen. Uh, you know, it's not like it's bleeding so terribly that it's unsalvageable. You know, if you're using it in a finer nib, you'd probably be good. So I would, I would say that it's definitely got a strength of bleed resistance. It's not bleed proof or anything like that. So it's going to be better than average in that respect. Last thing I wanted to do here was show you some comparable ink colors. Okay, so I've got a lot of different blues that I pulled. I got like this whole stack of swabs. So here's Ama Iro, and I thought for sure you'd want to see it next to Kanpeki just because they're both Iroshizuku. They're similar colors. Um, they really are, but Ama Iro is not as dark, not quite as saturated in color uh, than Kanpeki. And then because I used to be a huge fan of Kanpeki until I switched to Noodler's Blue and then from there I helped Nathan to develop Liberty's Elysium, which is now like my favorite blue ever, uh, completely biased favorite blue ever. Uh, that is a much darker blue than Amaero, though. It's a very, very different color. You can tell even in this video, which is not properly color adjusted, how different that is. Um, some other ones I thought you would want to see are, are some of the other Iroshizukus. So I've got Ajisai, uh, Suyukusa, and Azagao. And when you see Amaero compared to those ones, you realize how purple these other ones really are. Ama Iro has no purple to it, no green to it. It's just a very true kind of blue turquoise color. Uh, some of the other ones I had that are kind of comparable to it, Diamond Aqua Blue is a little bit darker. It's got a little more green to it. Diamond Turquoise, same kind of thing. It's very similar to Aqua Blue, but more saturated. Uh, Waterman Inspired Blue, which used to be South Sea Blue. That may be how you know it. Um, that one has a little more green to it as well, not quite as a true blue as Amairo. Schaefer Turquoise, same thing. You're kind of noticing a trend. A lot of these ones look really similar. Lamy Turquoise, again, right in that same vein. You'd notice that a lot of turquoises out there have a heavy green component to them. Amairo is one of the only ones I've seen that has very, very little green. It's very much of a true blue. And then just a couple more here. I told you I had a lot. Jairbon Blue Provence. Monteverde Turquoise, Platinum Mix Free Aqua Blue, and Dime, or no, sorry, Private Reserve Daphne Blue. 
Again, different levels of saturation, but kind of a same turquoise teal kind of vein as all the other ones are. Amaero, I tried to find one that was exactly like it. Maybe I missed it. If so, you can let me know in the comments. But it's really kind of the only true blue turquoise that I really found. So there you have it. Um, Amaero. I'm a fan of it. I'm not totally in love with it. Not as much as I was hoping I would be. But then again, you know, I didn't have really high expectations just because I've already got so many good blues that I love in this color range. But if you really like Hiroshizuku, you really like sky blues, it's definitely one that I could recommend that you would probably like quite a bit as long as you've got a little bit of time to let it dry on the page. If there's something you like about Amaero or something you don't, either way, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Just leave me something in the comments here. I'm happy to chat with you about it. Thanks so much for spending time with me today, and right on.